through my art and through outside of my art as well. You know what I mean? And I want to, you know, pave the way for future generations to come. You know, I want people mm-hmm. to be inspired by my story and encouraged and think, wow, well, Ricardo done it. I can do it. It's possible. I don't have to stay in this place. I don't have to be poor. I don't have to be disenfranchised. I don't have to be the stereotype. I'm more than this. Mm-hmm. Hi everyone, my name is Renel. Welcome to Discussion With. This show is aimed to provide advice, support and empowerment. Now today I have a really amazing guest. He's featured on the BBC Radio 1 show with Vanessa Feltz. He's also been featured in The Guardian, The Independent and he is also mentioned as one of the top 20 to watch for by um, Voice Newspaper as well. He is an actor and a musician, so please, everybody, welcome to the show, Ricardo P. Lloyd. Hello, man. Good to good to um, be on your show. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for coming on. Um, I think today will be a really interesting discussion because I feel like I've had to look at um, I've had to look at your story, I've had to look at your work, and I think that you're um, actually quite underrated because you've done mm. really well. Um, you've come from very humble beginnings as well, like myself. Yeah. Um, and that's why as well I, I always had um, you know I always admire um, people that have come from uh, humble beginnings to actually elevate progress and prosper through different avenues in life and, and doing things that are positive as mm-hmm. well um, because I noticed as well um, that you actually raised um, up to is it twenty thousand pounds with uh, with a team yeah. of people as, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. tell me a little bit more about that. Oh, yeah, so um, because I was a part of a a youth uh, company, um, there was an up-and-coming where there's a filmmaker that wanted to do a project that aimed towards a a black guy who wanted to do um, opera. So Mm -hmm. I was a part of a campaign to raise money for that project um, with the Royal Opera House and stuff like that. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so I was out there, you know, campaigning, social media and all these kind of things, and we raised over £20,000 and they're getting their film done. But um, I'm not a part of the project anymore, but, you know, I use my power, my influence to, you know, do what I can to, because it was something that I believed in. And I, it was exciting to see, like, the pro the process of them in that development of that short or that film, that feature film that they're trying to do. That's really good. No, thanks for that. Um, yeah, so see, things like that is very inspiring. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, congratulations for that, because that's, that's a really good achievement. And, and all the best to, to them. It's called Hear My Voice. Hear My Voice, yeah. okay. I'll have to check that out as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, please, tell me a bit about um, when you was, um, you know, studying as well, because mm. I, I noticed as well that you've got a BTEC, you've got a diploma, um, mm. you have a degree and a master's in performing yeah. arts. Yeah, it's, right? it's quite a lot of accolades, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, I never really did so well in education. <laughs> Actually, fell my GCSEs and stuff like that. Me too. And um, well, <laughs> join the club. But I don't, I don't, I don't feel like it's it's about you know where you start from. It's it's where you're going at the end of the day. It's about That's the mindset. Right. So I never let these things disempower me. Um, I turned it around for positive, and I wanted to prove to myself that I can achieve you know in terms of education and all that stuff. So I ended up you know doing you know successful and having a BA honors and a masters and stuff like that. You know, when school teachers and people had written me off saying I'll be a statistic, be in prison and all these kind of things, I'm trying to put all these black stereotypes in me. I decided I'm not going to fall into their stereotypes and I'm going to be my own person and I'm going to get educated, you know, and not just education in the sense of the institution wise, but self-educated. I think that's very important Mm. to where you want to go. Yeah, um, I'd like to touch on that as well. Um, like what you said about education and um, not completing mm. these, well, completing it, but not failing it, or even if you drop out mm-hmm. of, of GCSEs um, completely. Um, like myself, I, I, I did actually get to the end of school. I did my GCSEs, but I, I failed um, like oh. miserably with yeah. most subjects. I think it was only one subject I got that I was like oh. above a C. So for me personally, um, when you touch on that, I, I, it really does resonate because I feel like what you said is touching on um, 
uh, what was it, self development? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Never, never stop learning and, and just yeah. bearing yourself. You know, I, I feel like the best people in the world, the the leaders, in, you know, in the in the top of top of like sports, entertainment. You know, most of them haven't gone even in business. They haven't had the the necessary A's and B's. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're still successful because it's about how they apply apply themselves. You know, into their mm-hmm. field. That's right. How they educate themselves outside of the university. Some of the best men and women in the world studied outside of university, outside of school system. So That's that true. desire to want to grow should always be in you. You know, just because you don't have a piece of paper, you shouldn't let that be a barrier to wh- to get into where you want to go to in life. I totally agree. And do you know what? It's actually quite crazy. Um, I was having a look, um, I was doing some research, and mm. they were saying that, you know, up to like 70 to 80% of um, uh, young adults, well. when they leave full-time education, they don't do any self-development. And that's quite shocking, yeah. you know what I mean? So you know, I think... It, I just I'm scared of like being in mediocrity. That's why yeah. I, I think there's always going to be a desire in myself to kind of just push. You know, what I mean, I always want to better myself. I feel like life is about progress, and life is a constant progression. Mm-hmm. So you shouldn't be stagnant. You know what I mean? It's like even if you're 60, you still you still should be tri- striving for excellence yeah. and pushing yourself and elevating yourself. And I think maybe that's because of the heroes that I kind of grew up with. You know, I, I like the two packs, the Marcus Garvey's, the Martin Luther King's, the Malcolm Metz's, the Michael Jackson's, the Bob Marley's. These are people that were great to me. You know, Sidney Poitier. For sure. So when you have that level of aspiration and you look to great people, how could you not be great? Or how could you not aspire to be great and do great things? Yeah, that's right. And I feel like there is a lot in school sometimes that isn't actually um, taught, like mm. uh, financial literacy or how to even just to get by in life, just everyday life skills, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> it's not, mm-hmm. um, you know, taught. And they're, and they're some, sometimes the most fundamental, um, you know, they're the fundamental aspects of life. Like, you have to um, be good, like, with finance. You have to know how to, um, you know, save and invest or or even, um, you know, just life skills, you know, just to, just to survive. You said something interesting now, um what you just said um you know what how i look at it is that because we come from you know maybe working class backgrounds or you know disenfranchised backgrounds uh, and we don't have the privilege of having you know our parents that know that person or whatever we have to kind of work like harder yeah. and when i say harder yeah. it's not necessarily like i mean hard in a self in the sense of working on ourselves we have to develop <laughs> ourselves and cuz where we lack we can then fill the gap with that education, that empowerment we give to ourselves. I totally agree with that, yeah. I, I, I really do. It is so important. And um, I think there needs to be more role models out there as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is some great people out there that you can look up to. But I feel like um, looking up to is mm-hmm. one thing, but actually having access to to them. So a lot of the people out there that are doing great things... Mm-hmm. Um, that have come from the same communities that we're yeah. talking about, I feel like they need to be a bit more connected and involved with the youth. And I want to make sure that I'm a person that continuously stays connected and never forgets where I've come from, you know what I mean? Because you know, where we come from is what makes, what builds character at the end of the day. And I want a young person to look at my story and feel like, wow, well, Ricardo's made it, so I can make it. And I, I don't even believe in the, the terms of making it because I feel like Success is a journey, you know what I mean? That's right. It's not a destination. And I feel as well, which is important to to mention as well, is that everybody's success Mm -hmm. and everybody's um, kind of made it Mm -hmm. (laughs) is like different to everybody else's. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might even ask, um, for an example, you might ask Elon Musk, Mm -hmm. um, you know, have have you made it? And and for him, he'll be like, no, because I want to get people to Mars. (laughs) So he might have achieved all this success from Tesla, and from all his other business ventures before with PayPal and things like that. But, you know, has he made it? He might say to you, well, no, I haven't made it. But I'm to the world, I is, I want he made to. it, yeah. But to everybody else, yeah. it's like, he's made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then somebody might have made it that have just, you know, um, you know, they might just be a small, um, you know, maybe a market trader. Um, however, that was their dream to have their own little business and to provide for their family. And they might be happy um, yeah. you know with that and with their family around them you're accomplishing what you set out to accomplish that's right and you know everyone's success is like like you're saying relative and it's all about purpose 
Like, are you fulfilling your purpose, your God-given purpose on this earth? Because that's what I measure success by. If I wake up and I die tomorrow, I want to know that I done everything that God has deposited in me, you know, all my dreams, all my aspirations, mm. that I achieved it because I feel like life is just in vanity if you're not achieving your purpose. It's like you're achieving someone else's purpose, you know what I mean? And That's I'm right. not trying to do that. Well, I think, yeah. I think we're going to go out like quite that. well, actually. Yeah. I think definitely off camera we're going to have some deep discussion. 100%, yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. So tell me a little mm. bit more about um, mm. growing up. So was you born in the UK? Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. born in the UK. Um, more than more recently, it's out there that I've been born in uh, Ipswich town. Okay. But I never grew up in Ipswich. I grew up in in London. So I've always grown up around, um, you know, in northwest London. Yeah. So like yeah. Wembley, Wolsey, all those kind of um, areas. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my upbringing has been in London, and I feel like when you grow up in London, you have a different mentality. You know, the city life, the hustle and bustle, and all that stuff, and mm -hmm. you appreciate different cultures, different worlds when you're in like in a, a, a town there's a different mentality. So I feel like London has definitely given me that kind of, that, that foundation and that, you know, that ground to know that I have to, you know, strive if, you, if, you make, if it makes sense. You know, you really got to be a hustler if, to, be a, to be a city boy, if I make a sense, because everyone's trying to compete for the jobs and for opportunities. It's a very different mentality. Mm -hmm. um, somebody that lives in a city is very fast paced, you know, and, you know, you have to take your opportunities as well, isn't it? I feel mm -hmm. like it, 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 because it's, it's very competitive. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, no, I totally agree on that. And it's, it's interesting because I find that a lot of people that is outside of London, they are trying to come to London. But I feel like me as a Londoner, I actually don't really want to be in <laughs> London as much, you know what I mean? But yeah, I know that yeah, yeah. this is where the opportunities are. It, it, it's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because yeah. sometimes you do want that peace. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's, it's a, yeah. like, you you probably have seen it when you've travelled, right? You've gone outside mm -hmm. of London and, like, when you're in towns and you're in different places, it's, like, not so, like, hectic, not so busy. Even the night over here is still busy. But when you're outside, it's more of that peaceful, That's kind right. of quiet, you know what I mean? Everyone goes to bed at 8 o'clock, <laughs> you know what I mean? And up at yeah, 5 in the yeah, morning. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, my fam my family's um in in uh, Ipswich. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my granddad, my grandparents came from the Windrush generation and, oh, okay. and stuff like that, Jamaican background. So you know, I've always had that a kind of foundation of you know my family you mm -hmm. know, being being there. And I've you know I've grown up. It hasn't been easy, you know, being in, being in London from young. But um, I feel like it's all part of the story. It's all part of the journey. And yeah. before I used to just you know despise things like where I was born and stuff like that, being out. But, you know, this is what makes me me, you know what I mean? It's all part of my USP, you know what I mean? Every, every quality, the good, the bad, the things that I'm ashamed of, this is what makes me me. And I'm trying to be me. I'm not trying to be just another person. I want to be an anomaly. I want to be someone that stands out. I want to be a leader in my field. This is all about empowering and inspiring the youth. So it's good to have your take on it because there might be many people out there that um, aspire to be an actor, um, especially um, in recent years when you're mm -hmm. seeing uh, re like act UK actors um, and, and black actors as well winning awards and Oscars and things like that. So yeah, we can touch on that <laughs> because um, I feel like yeah, like the UK in terms of like in terms of embracing our black t talent I actually wrote an article about this in The Independent because mm -hmm. I've had my own kind of opportunities as an actor you know trying to you know make it well not, not make it but try to you know work out here in the UK it's not yeah. been easy there's a lot of like barriers you know there's a lot of classism mm -hmm. racism all this stuff still goes on and it's annoying that a lot of our talent has to go to abroad like us and all that stuff right to look for those opportunities and once they get those opportunities those breaks that's when the uk embraces them as their own so do you feel yeah. that um with um uk acting yeah um with the barriers that you mentioned yeah. do you think that it's, it is better for um an actor to go to like the us um to to get much more opportunities. Well, that's so. kind of where I'm at right now in my life and my career is like mm -hmm. making that decision. I have a USA agent and all that stuff. Okay. But it's, it's not like I want to just be in America and I want to just like go out there and make it out there. It's, it's not that. It's just that when I'm over here, I feel like there's only so far you can go. It's like there's a ceiling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've worked with different types of people or whatever mm -hmm. and there's so much I can do. 
But I feel like there's only so much you can do or they allow you to do as a black actor over here. Yeah, right. things might slowly change, but there's still like a problem. Right, right. And just touching back on that, um, what you said about the 4% um, mm-hmm. with, with the work. When you say that, do you mean like consistent work? Yeah, like, when, they, when they make money, you know what I mean? Because even like on, being on like a show, yeah, like a drama series yeah. on BBC or yeah. whatever. or Yeah, okay. Because even um, uh, recently, um, you know, um, Equity, which I'm a part of, you know, Actors Union, they said that um, a lot of actors are on like universal credit and stuff like that. They have to support themselves. Yeah, yeah. So you can see that there's a, definitely a problem in terms of like just economically and all these kind of things within the industry. And I think COVID didn't help it as well. Yeah, touching on that, I was going to mention uh, with COVID. Mm. So there must have not been a lot of work for you. No, there wasn't. There wasn't a lot of work. And as an actor as well, you tend to have like different kind of jobs while mm. you're waiting for your next acting job. So like different industries had shut down like hospitality industries and stuff like that right. so it was it was definitely hard you know I personally experienced that and I know there's a lot of people that experienced that within the industry I met an actor while I was um, doing a acting course and she was uh, working in the theatre and she got made redund- redundant and stuff like that and had no job and all this stuff and mm. struggling to pay bills so this stuff really affected our industry and I, I think as well the lack of support from the government on you know, things like the arts industry, which is so essential, it was appalling. So um, what would you say yeah. is the best way for the youth to get into acting from a, from, from a young age? Because I, um, mm. or even if not, it's not like a, a primary school age, of course not, but when I'm in young age, I mean like school leaver maybe, um, or even if you're in your... Um, early 20s or whatever yeah. like what would you say is the best way is it to go independently or would you say is to uh, join up with like an agency that's interesting um, I would just say like starting somewhere I think for me I was privileged in the sense that my school actually had like drama and stuff like that some schools don't even have these things mm-hmm. but there's things like youth theatres there's community fears there's things like Anna Shears and mm-hmm. she's you know, a classic lady that, you know, teachers taught, like, theatre and stuff. A lot of people, like I was saying, um, Daniel Kalua and all these people attended those classes, improvisation classes and stuff, okay. which she kind of set up. And there's there's many things out there, but you kind of just have to just start somewhere, you know what I mean? Yeah. And if you have a passion for acting or you have a passion for performing, you know, just start, just do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even if you perform in your, in your, your, your mum's pub or something, like, just exactly, start, you yeah. know what I mean? And I feel like now, um, which is the exciting thing about this, um, you know, for, for the generation coming up now, mm. is that you've got so many different platforms. I mean, <laughs> years ago there wasn't even YouTube, but I mean, YouTube, mm. there's so many different ways that you can maybe start off doing little things here and there. And even on the other um, social mm. media platforms like the Snapchats, the TikToks, mm. getting your face known, doing things, maybe little act acting skits or you know you know what I mean I say yeah. this as well as a creative never stop learning and working on your craft as well right so like for me I'm constantly reading I'm constantly studying and watching stuff you know going to theatres and stuff like that and mm. I think that's really important yeah so 100% yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just because I have a BA honours in, in performing arts or I have a BTEC and all these qualifications or those um, things on my resume it doesn't mean that I should stop you know learning you know what I mean? There's so much improvement to make. Even if I have an Oscar right now, I'll still be trying to study and trying to understand. And I learned this from like great people that I looked up to, like you know Michael Jackson, for example. He was the king of pop and he had mm. all these accolades and all the awards and all this success, but he never stopped rehearsing. That's right. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's a level of excellence you know, in any field that you should aspire to be in terms of just being on top of your field and your, your craft. And I think a lot of people do get complacent. It's like once they have a hit or, you know, a rapper or once they've done a film mm-hmm. or whatever, they can be complacent mm-hmm. and not think that they need to train again or they need to learn more, if that makes sense. But yeah. I'm not trying to do that, if I'm making sense. And I, and I encourage other people as well. Yes, you could do your TikToks and all that stuff, but study what it is to be an actor, to be a performer, to be a creative. You know what I mean? Look, study the greats and be greater. I was going to ask as well. Yeah. Um, I did, because um, obviously mm. with every guest I like to do a bit yeah. of research yeah. and find out, um, you know, the work that you've done mm. and, and like what, what motivates you, what drives you, mm. what pushes you forward. Um, but 
I saw that you did, um, you was involved in a, a play, a Shakespeare play, mm. and it was, um, you know, endorsed by uh, Rudolf Walker as well. He, mm. he said that, you know, it was brilliant, um, mm. you know, ITV News and also The Guardian as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell me a little bit more about that play. And so um, in 2019, um, I'll I just give you a bit of context on mm -hmm. my, my story in terms of yeah, like, sure, my sure, career sure. in acting. So I've come from a performing arts background, so mm -hmm. I have BA honours in performing arts, all that stuff. I um, graduated in 2016. From 2016, I did an MBA, Master of Business Administration, mm -hmm. was in the corporate kind of world, you know, making money, but I was never satisfied, I wasn't happy. Right. It's like, I always wanted to be an actor, but I had given up on the dream of being an actor. So 2019, well, I haven't, I didn't give up completely, but I'll say that I detoured. I was trying to like do what was expected, like the social norms, like have a job and all these kind of things and make money. Yeah. And what the world sees as successful. What I said, like I said earlier, success is about purpose, not about all of that stuff. Not what people want of you. It's what you know that you're meant to be doing. Like you are meant to be doing this. That's why you're doing it, right? That's yeah, your yeah, purpose. Yeah. So that's what I see as successful. So. I was I went I joined the youth theatre in two thousand and nineteen. Um, I did I worked with Shakespeare Globe uh, Theatre, you know Mark Rylance and all these uh, people, and then I got casted as uh, Romeo in this play called Excluded, and Excluded um, took Shakespeare's uh, characters right. and the contemporary and it put them in a contemporary setting in a school setting. So it touched on things like what we we're talking about education. It touched on like youth violence. It touched on all these um, things with Shakespearean characters. Mm -hmm. So it was a it was a a, a big thing, and um, because of like the reports on like school exclusion and all this stuff, it was very like topical. It was a topical piece, and um, every everybody kind of knows like Romeo, you know, from Shakespeare and all that stuff. And I was obviously Romeo, so it mm -hmm. kind of drew um, a lot of attention to me, and um, yeah, it was it was kind of like. Life changed in the sense of, because um, I had um, not been doing acting since, like I said, from unis and stuff like that. So yeah. to get back into it, it was like repositioning me to my purpose. Right. So I'm very grateful for that opportunity to, to do something like that and, you know, work with other young, you know, up and coming talent and, you know, do what we done. You know what I mean? It was, yeah. No, that's really good. I really hate the saying, mm -hmm. the grass sometimes it's not greener on the other side yeah. or whatever that is that's saying because they basically say to people that if you don't if you take a risk elsewhere in life in whatever you want to do that there's no that more there's a more chance yeah. that it's better where you are static i totally disagree with that i feel mm. like you have to take opportunities in life Sometimes you have to go out of your comfort zone, I think. Mm. And I think as well with the youth, to take away from this as well, is that getting out of your comfort zone by the fact that, yeah, I might actually have to move. You know, if I want to be successful it, it, and be happy within myself and, and get the opportunities and the roles that I want, I might actually have to leave, like, a certain part of the country or I might even have to leave the country full stop and go elsewhere where there's opportunities to, to propel you. Because, I mean, even like, for example, mm -hmm. when I was saying with Idris Elba, I mean, he went to the US, he, he did the um, series The Wire. I mean, that series um, that it, series was huge, wasn't it? Definitely, it, 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 yeah. it's, it's up there yeah. with the top US, mm. um, you know, production, like series productions. Um, when you make a mistake, you might go away can't um, go out there and think, oh, do you know what, this is this has been a nightmare. But at the end of the day, I don't look at it as a failure, I look at it as a lesson. It's all part I don't of the journey. Believe in, yeah. I don't believe in failures, I only believe in lessons. It's, it's part of the journey and it will help you grow mm -hmm. and then you think, okay, next time what could I do better? Mm -hmm. Or can I change this, tweet this maybe and make it work? You're definitely right. Um, I was going to add as well when we were just talking about like stereotypes <laughs> as what young kind of black actors might face in the UK. Mm -hmm. Like a lot, I know like a lot of my peers, um, they have taken jobs to kind of pay or have have money in their pocket. You know what right. I mean? And I, it's 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 sad for me because I I've turned down a lot of like jobs, acting jobs, and people might think, oh, you beggars can't be choosers. But the reason why I've turned down those acting jobs is because I know that whatever decision I make. It's kind of paving the way for my legacy, 
you know, in the sense of mm-hmm. the choices that I make. And like 20 years from now, I want to have like a career and be happy with everything that I've done in my career, all the roles that I played, the stories I've told. I don't want to do anything that is, that I look back and think, I shouldn't have done that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, a lot of my, like a couple of my peers that I know have taken on roles that they're not happy within themselves, but they've done it just for the paycheck or just to wow. put their name or position them out there. But I refuse to do that. I feel like you, as an artist, you kind of have to keep that integrity. You know, integrity right. and that sense of self. It's all all right, it's like selling out, basically. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't let like, yeah. people mess with your brand. Yeah. Build a brand. Yeah, and, uh, 100%. Yeah. And, you know, I could have done, like I said, certain opportunities, but, you know, I know where I want to go and I know the abilities and things that I can do. And I'm not going to be like just a stereotype because, yes, I might have came from northwest London. And I might have had these bad experiences, but I also had two degrees and that stuff. And there's other people that come from where we come from and mm-hmm. still isn't, don't fit into that stereotype. That's right. And so there's other stories that need to be told out there. And mm-hmm. I feel like it is like a mission for me to really be a representation of humanity on the whole, like the good, the bad and the ugly. And I can't just keep on playing roles or doing roles or doing things that breaks my community if I'm making sense. That's right, yeah. So, and I wanna, be, I wanna be the change that, you know, I have to be the change that I wanna see basically. And I, and I think it's a responsibility as a up and coming artist or as an artist or as a human being in general to be that if I'm making sense. I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm too preachy here, man. No, it's no, like no. we're in church or something. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I think it's good. I think it's really good what you touched on. If yeah. I was to ask you uh, future plans, yeah. uh, what, what, what's in store for, for yourself? What, 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 do you, what would you like to do yeah. from now and where would you like to see yourself in like five years' time? I want to do what you're doing on because like, you're doing it on a, a smaller scale, but I want to do it on a global scale, like just change the world, inspire people, yeah. um, empower people. You know what I mean? You know, through my art and through outside of my art as well. You know what I mean? And I want to, you know, pave the way for future generations to come. You know, I want people mm-hmm. to be inspired by my story and encouraged and think, wow, well, Ricardo done it. I can do it. It's possible. I don't have to stay in this place. I don't have to be poor. I don't have to be disenfranchised. I don't have to be the stereotype. I'm more than this. Mm-hmm. And I have a purpose. And I'm going to live my purpose to the full. That's what I want people to see through my life, through my story, through my career, everything, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I don't want to... I want to know that, you know, in my lifetime, I lived a great life. And yes, I had different ups and, you know, highs and lows and whatever. Mm-hmm. But I lived a life that was purpose-driven. And I empowered and I inspired people. And I gave a sense of hope, yeah. if I'm making sense. I know that sounds a bit no, whiffy, ra- w- yeah, re- re- a re- what's a wishy washy or whatever, but Mm-mm. I just feel like, yes, I can play different roles and I can do like, you know, if I was to do like different films, feature films or whatever, but the bigger purpose is to impact. Yeah. It's always going to be that for me. Yeah. And I know that my talent and all this stuff, I'm just a vessel for all these things, you know, an instrument, but mm-hmm. I have a bigger purpose in life. Um, we're touching on that as well before we came in uh, we had a discussion you were saying having like you know being happy within yourself but also having a brand you know Mm -hmm. you don't want to portray yourself in a certain way that that you don't feel is right for yourself you want to make sure that you know you represent yourself Mm -hmm. in in, in the direction that you want to go and also to show others that you know this is what I'm about. Yeah, I think I think that's very important for me. Like I said, like when I look back at my life, if, and I want to be exactly. happy with the choices that I made. You know, what I mean, obviously I made mistakes on the way, but we all do. I, yeah, I want to I want to just feel like I'm complete in life. And yeah, like yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. yeah like exactly. for example, like some of my heroes are like people like a Sydney Portier, for example, like a black actor that broke down so much doors for the Denzels and all these kind of things. Mm. And I know that when he looks at his career, he's happy with the choices that he's made. Mm-hmm. And, the, and, and who he's able yeah, to inspire. Yeah, and breaking... That's so why I want to have a, a legacy like that, if that makes sense. And I feel like if I could do it in the UK, so be it. But if I have to go to America, then so be it. If I have to go to Japan or China to do it, then exactly, so be it. Yeah. But it's just about your purpose. Yeah. You're feeling your purpose here. You're going to give him purpose on earth. Mm-hmm. That's right. I totally agree. 
Uh, definitely. I feel like I just came here to preach today. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not a pastor by any way. I'm, a, I'm an actor. I'm <laughs> Carlo P. Lloyd. I'm an actor. Slash, uh, yeah. slash pastor now. No, I'm an actor. I'm always going to be an actor. Like, that's my, I always say I'm an actor first before anything else. Yeah. But everything else just feeds into my ability to be a creative and actor, yeah. that makes no, sense. I, I love that. I yeah. love that. So I was just going to ask as well, mm-hmm. so where can everybody find you as well? So... You can just search me on Google, and I'm, I'm, I'm joking, that's been a bit, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's uh, Ricardo P. Lloyd on, on like, social media and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. and obviously my website is ricardoployd.com. Today we had uh, Ricardo P. Lloyd, and he's a fantastic up-and-coming actor. He's shown that you can make it and break barriers, and what I love about him is that he's come from humble beginnings, like myself as well, and he's made sure that it doesn't stop him and knock him down. You know, he's done uh, major things from um, raising up to £20,000, helping um, with others, you know, to raise £20,000 to help people uh, produce um, a film. And also as well, um, you know, starting off in performing arts, he's got, you know, degrees, um, he's got a master's, he's got um, a diploma as well in performing arts. So it just shows that his hard work from a young age. And not only that as well, um, you know, recognizing as well uh, through the discussion that if there isn't opportunities here, he's more than happy to uh, look elsewhere. You know, out of your out of his comfort zone. And I think definitely people watching as well at home should take that in mind that sometimes you have to, you know, get out, step out of your comfort zone, and to you know look elsewhere to make opportunities happen. Um, and I feel like not only that that um, he he will be able to build a legacy which is something that we've discussed as well legacy is key making sure that you stand up for your rights stand up for what you believe in stand up for you know what you want people to look at you as and also most importantly happiness and by doing that you know taking roles that are you know important to what he believes in and you know i feel like that is really important as well to take away from and i think that he's going to have a really successful career and he's definitely um you know going to be a very good friend of mine um you know we met recently uh through online but i definitely believe that will be something that uh you know a, a good friendship from this because he does have the right mindset and i like people like that um, and I feel like taking away from this today is just make sure that you're happy within yourself. Positivity, you know, is key. I always preach that. And um, yeah, don't let anyone knock you down. Strive for your dreams um, and keep pushing. So thank you everyone for watching um, discussion with, with myself, Renel and Ricardo. And we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care.